a screamer. All right, all right. Here we go. Let's talk about um, WTF DFW. Where's the fun DFW? Um, we're at episode five. Um, today's uh, a special Valentine's edition. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it is Valentine's Day. So for those of you that celebrate, there you go. Go get you some. Um, so it's been an interesting some, week. Somewhat. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you fill in the blanks. Yeah. So it's been an interesting week. I think I've um, been touching uh, some nerves out there. Um, not in a good way, but I don't know. Um, I saw that. Well, we're averaging roughly 200 views a week on this so far. So for the first four weeks, thank you for um, following my rants a little bit. Um, but I guess I've been bringing up some topics that I've had um, people talking. Um, good, bad, or other. Um, you know, I've spoken about um, so far getting some younger people involved in music, um, the oversaturation of tribute bands that are out there, um, the need to mix things up a little bit, um, promoting yourselves as a band, um, and then promoting venues unselfishly. And this one uh, touched some people, I guess. Um, some dude started talking about how we don't support original music, but then I'm like, the same time he's saying that, the same weekend we have Flash Mob playing out at Fat Daddy's with Spread Eagle. Um, then he's talking about, are you doing it unselfishly? You know, um, you know what bands have you promoted that you, you know, didn't promote them, looking to book them or whatever? And I, the first that came to mind was Messer. You know, I heard about them do a video, and I was like, oh, they're pretty badass, I love this band, they started sharing some of their stuff, and then I found out they were actually local and said, hey, let me try to book them, so, um, but then other original bands that I have out at Fat Daddy's all time, you know, like Aaron Copeland, you know, he has another one, I know it's country music, Rodney Smith, country music, um, Billy Joe is playing out here, um, country music again, um, I promoted and talked about a band called Grand Illusion out of Arlington, an original band, um, but then it became, well, that's you talking about it. You know, what does Fat Daddies promote other venues and all? And I'm thinking, well, um, you know, good, bad, or ugly, my name is kind of synonymous with um, Fat Daddies. Um, everybody that, well, most people that know me know I'm associated with Fat Daddies, and that's either good or bad, depending upon where I'm at. Um, but, um, you know, they say, uh, you, are, is fat that he's promoting unselfishly, is promoting other venues. And I'm thinking, well, first when we talk about my name being synonymous, it's, you know, like an example I gave was Sebastian Bach. Everybody knows him for being with Skid Row, but Skid Row doesn't promote the band Kiss. But anytime you talk to Sebastian Bach about anything, he's talking about Kiss and the influence they've had on him. So, um, when you're saying, you know, fat that he's isn't promoting other venues, you know, like I, or original music, it just made no sense to me. Um, and I think what it boiled down to, and I've gotten some comments from people or messages and all, I think he's just mad because we don't support his type of metal. You know, like, um, you know, whatever kind of music he plays, and I, I know it's a harder metal or rock music. Um, he talked about Haltham Theater, which I've never honestly ever heard of. And um, then I looked at them, researched them a little bit, and I saw, you know what? You know, they, they have a lot of that metal, you know, music out there. And I said, well, kudos to them. And I actually put that online. So, and, you know, they found their niche. They're, they're hitting what their market is looking for, you know. So good job to the people over there at Haltham. You know, keep doing it. If that's working for them, kudos. I love seeing it. Um, but again, that's their market. You know, our market, our demographic is vastly different. We're old. You know, I guess you can kind of <laughs> say, you know, we have that. Yeah, happens you know, to everybody. <laughs> you know, anywhere from 30 to 60, you know, you'll see 70 and 80 year olds coming into Fat Daddies. I love that. But, you know, they don't want to be listening to, Rawr, you know, all of this stuff going on out there with the, you know, metal scene or, you know, people dressing up with face paint and all of that stuff. So it is what it is. But. You know, I have gotten a lot of support from, you know, I heard from Keith Cruz. He messaged me. I guess he's the owner of Revel. Um, and then we had a pretty good conversation. I've never met him. Never met him in my life. But we're going to set up some time to get together and talk and um, just BS a little bit, you know. So 
Um, he appreciated some of what I talk about. Um, no, especially, you know, like last week, you know, I said, you know, hey, Revel, you know, we talked about Tees, we talked about Lava, Bedford, whatever it is. So, um, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't look at them as competitors. They just happen to be people in the same, you know, industry at us, but a different market or a different demographic that they're out there. So, but I did talk to Keith Cruz, looking forward to um, talking to him. Um, Rick Hare called me up. Everybody knows Rick Hare. Um, we had a conversation. I think he's actually going to be coming in to um, co-host with me one of these days, so that should be fun. Um, Brian Dixon from the band Grand Illusion, the Sticks band, you know, he's um, publicly actually supported us on um, some post, um, and I've seen him comment on DFW, DFW Tribute, you know, page on um, Facebook as well. And then I've actually seen and heard other people talking about the same topics that we've been talking about for the first four weeks. And it's ironic and, you know, what do they say? Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. But if I'm sparking conversation and then these people are running podcasts or posting or making comments similar to what I'm talking about, I guess it kind of supports that, you know, hey, there is some relevance to what I talk about every now and then. It's not just me, you know, rambling uncontrollably or something. So um, thank you for those that are listening. Thank you for those that are engaged in the conversations. Um it's actually been uh, pretty interesting to hear and see the comments and all. So keep it up. I appreciate you. Um, so recap kind of what happened last week at FATS. Obviously, live band karaoke was out there Wednesday. Thursday, we had Reputation, the Taylor Swift cover. And maybe it was lucky because maybe it, that's the reason why Kansas City was able to win. Um, so we played a small part in that, I think. Um, but... That was an incredible night. We had a bunch of kids out there. Um, they're singing along. You know, who, the singer for the Reputation Band was giving the kids little bracelets and all. It was it was cute to see, but everybody was having a great time, and it was packed. And um, you know, it's funny that other person that you know I was saying posted earlier and complaining was like, really, you know, you're gonna have a Taylor Swift tribute over an original metal band out there. And I'm thinking, yeah. well, that a uh, Taylor Swift tribute packed the place and. Um, it was a great time, put butts in seats, and I guess did exactly what we want. So, you know, shame on me for trying to, you know, you know, fill our venue and, you know, yeah. earn some revenue and all of that. But um, then we had Friday Night Frequency opening up for Metal Shop, which was a great night. Um, so Lee and his band Frequency, I heard it was killer. Um, and then Flash Mob, like I mentioned, an original band. Um, um, you know, Bobby Woods band opening up for Spread Eagle. And I saw some posts from people that came out to see Spread Eagle and said they've never heard of them before. Again, they're from New York back in the late 80s and all, but they're hooked. They're like, you know, this band is incredible and it's, it's great to see a professional, you know, original band coming in that people have never heard of because they get to see, A, look at the, not so much the production that they put on, but the professionalism. And it's an interesting conversation because they said the, um, I guess, more experienced the band is, you know, some of these bands that I brought in that are, you know, national acts, they'll come on stage and they'll sound check for about 18 seconds. They're like, done, we're good. And then um, other bands will be, be up there um, sound checking for an hour, hour and 20 minutes, <laughs> you know, trying to make it right. But it's kind of cool to see. But I'm glad um, the Spread Eagle show went well. They're coming back in November, I think, 29th. So you'll have one more chance to come and check them out. If you haven't seen them or if you've heard good things about them and you didn't get a chance to come out, now's your other chance. Um, conversation this week, and it's interesting because some people have talked to me about this in the past. I had people texting me, you know, this week. Um, but it's talking about band lists. So if you like a band... You know, this is just more a friend's band. Why are you calling the band and asking them to put you on a band list at the door? It, it just, it makes no sense, you know. You should be promoting that band, trying to bring as much revenue as you can for your friend's band or a band you liked into a venue instead of reaching out to them and asking, can you get me in for free? It, it just makes no sense to me, and I think some of the bands are a little bit frustrated with that as well. Like, you know, hey... I could see, you know, I have bands reach out to me occasionally saying, hey, we're playing over at this place. Um, can you come and check us out? You know, I'll get you a table. I'll get you in, you know, so you don't have to pay cover. But they want me to co-see their band 
you know, with the potential of getting them into fat daddies, that's different. But if you have a band that you're friends with, um, think about the revenue that you're trying to, you know, bring in for the venue on that night. The more revenue a band brings in, the better opportunity they have of playing there again. So um, my thought is stay away from, you know, asking to be put on the band's guest list. And there are certain bands that refuse to have a, a door list. Once in a while, I'll offer, you know, to a band, you know, hey, they have, you know, X number of people, you know, coming to the show. And I'd say, you know, hey, if you want a table for your band, let me know. If you have people that you specifically want to get in, um, you know, your wife, your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is that you want to, you know, get in for free, let me know. I'll put them on the door list for them. But, um, you know, stop thinking about getting in for free. You know, like that that's the only thing I kind of think about. You know, e even in the past, people have texted me on a Friday night at 8 o'clock at night saying, hey, um, we're coming to Fat Daddy's. Can you get me a table? And I'm like, it's 8 o'clock on a Friday night. You know, I'm out someplace else. So we're out to dinner. We're out of state, whatever it is. That's the last of my priorities. I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to entertain it. Um, but then I also posted a couple of weeks back, there are two types of people. One that will like, hey, um, can you put me on a guest list or get me a table tonight? Or two, you know, hey, we're going and hanging out tonight. I hope we get to see you guys. So I guess don't be number two. Don't don't be number one, you know. <laughs> like don't don't try to get in for free. If you'd be surprised how many times people will say, "Hey, we're coming up, you know, we're hanging out. Hope to see you." And I'm like, "Hey, you know what? I'm gonna get a table up there. Come sit at our table if you want. Um, don't worry about buying a table." Or once in a while, I'm like, "Hey, you know, I'll leave your name at the door so you can get it." But those are people that don't expect it, and I'm gonna try to help them out. But on top of it, these are also people that I know are spending money, and they're going to tip my staff well. They're going to run up a pretty decent you know, bar tab. They'll eat, they'll drink, and all of that stuff. Where other people, you know, their hope is to get in free or get at the club early enough so they don't have to pay a cover, and then they could grab a table. Um, they could grab a table by the stage if it's not reserved for somebody else, and then they'll just be there drinking iced tea and water the entire night. Um, so um, if you want to come out to the club, you know, call. I encourage everybody, call the club. You know, you could pay in advance. You know, it's the cover charge times whatever number of people. We'll get you a table at that point. But if you do that, you know you're coming out, call the club, you know, reserve a table. Keep the people that are trying to get in free all the time. Get them to the back of the place, you know. Let the, let the paying people sit up front. Um, and that's what I encourage everybody. Just, you know, call, pay the reservation. If it's a $13 cover night, it's a $13 cover night, you know. So we'll charge you if you have two people, 26 bucks. We'll take it over, to, you know, the phone. And then your name is on the list when you come in. You have a reserve table. You're good. It's all taken care of. But um, you won't have to worry about trying to find a table when you're there. Um, but it's, it's a good way, you know, just to make sure you're, you're able to, you know, see the bands and, t and accomplish what you want. And then, um, you know, pay to cover, buy some food, buy some drinks. I saw a post, John Viola, um, talked about it this week when people were talking about, you know, oh, this club is too much money, they charge this, they charge this. But then you think about it, and he, he brought up the, pack, the point, if you're going to a movie, you know, you and your spouse or partner are going to a movie, you know, you're spending your eight, ten bucks a ticket. I don't even know how much movie tickets are. I just I don't know. we just kind of just pay it, and then for popcorn, soda, beer, if it's if you're drinking in there, if it's you know a place that serves food as well, you're easily paying fifty, sixty bucks a night just to go to the movies. If you're trying to go out to dinner, you and your partner, like tonight, you're going out Valentine's Day. I guarantee, if you're having a couple of drinks, you're not getting out of there for under a hundred bucks. Yep. So. We talk about fat daddies. We might be charging thirteen dollars a ticket to get in, you know, or per person to get in. That's twenty six bucks. Our most expensive food item is like a loaded, you know, pizza with every topping that we have on there for like fifteen to sixteen dollars. You know, that'll feed you know two, three people very easily. Um, but you know, with our drinks or everybody talks about how you know reasonable our alcohol prices are. But at least you know. You're getting value when you come there. 
So support the, like, again, we talk about supporting the venues, but pay the cover, support the bands, you know, do what you can to bring in revenue for those bands, you know, that are playing there. So um, that's it on my rant for this week with that. But um, keep in mind, I'm still looking for original band submissions. Um, You know, let me listen to your band. You know, let's see what you got. See if it's something, you know, worthwhile that we could either bring out, um, use to open, you know, for maybe a tribute or whatever the case may be. You know, like I said, we have um, tribute bands opening up for, you know, original bands. We've done it. I have, you know, original bands opening up for other original bands. You know, coming up we have, I think, Messer, I have, who's original. I have the Tools band opening up for him, and I think Cherry Bomb, the Joan Jett tribute, opening up that show as well. So... I have no problem booking an original band to try to open up for a tribute or vice versa, whatever it is, if it's a good band. You know, I'm not just going to book anybody to come out there. So show me what you got. Let me listen to it. Let's see whether or not it's um, somebody we can, you know, bring into the club and try to support you. I'm still filling out 2024 calendars. Um, you know, I've, I've booked a couple of more people, you know, this past week. I'm trying to be, I guess, cautious about who I bring in because I am trying to bring in a variety, you know. And I talked about a couple of weeks ago, we've had 30 or 40 bands that I've never had at Fat Daddy's before, and it's working out really well because it's bringing in a pretty cool crowd for it. So um, just bring in the people that people really aren't, used to um typically seeing out there it's not the same band over and over again so have you you tried some um heavy hardcore head metal no (laughs) (laughs) Uh, no well well what i'm gonna say is that like there are some heavier metal bands that i've had up there they don't do well um yeah yeah. no that's over they just they just don't um it's already hard enough to try to bring in you know a Metallica band, they do decent out there, um, not incredible. You know, bringing an Iron Maiden band, um, you know, there are a bunch of them down out of Houston that I brought up. Um, but they, they, I try to bring it in just for a variety, but they're not mo- really money makers for the yeah. show. First yeah. of all, the problem is most of those bands or the fans for those bands, and I'm one of them, you know, I grew up with, you know, Slayer. You know, Megadeth, all of that. You go to a show, you stand in front of the stage, you're drinking beer. You're you're planted there. You're not sitting down. You're not eating. You're not spending money on yep. food. You're there to drink and watch a band. And you're not making multiple trips to the bar because you don't want to lose your spot up at the stage. So Mosh pit. Yeah, pretty, exactly. <laughs> so, And that's exactly what it reminds me of, like CBGB and stuff like that yeah. back in the day. You, you know, you, you find your spot. You stay in your spot the entire night. But um, that's the downside to some of those bands. Other than that, like I said, the demographic, you know, that we have doesn't necessarily, when I have a band like a Metallica tribute, it is bringing out a specific type of audience. Oh, 100%. You know, little um, Martha, you know, who just retired from teaching is not coming out to listen to, you know, a Metallica tribute. So I do that strategically and specifically where I'll have another different kind of music on maybe a Saturday night if I'm bringing out those type of bands on Friday. So, um, So that's it. Um, this week we got um, live band karaoke. Tonight it's Wednesday, and every Wednesday night we do live band karaoke. Again, that's been super fun. I believe we'll be out there tonight with some friends um, celebrating our Valentine's Day the way we do. Um, Heartbreak Petty, a Tom Petty tribute. First time they're coming out. They're playing tomorrow night, um, Thursday night. Friday night is Inhaling, um, Jeff Gilpin's band. Sands, um, you know, Terry, you know, Ronson. You know, he's having some medical issues, whatever, get well, hope everything, you know, you heal up from that. But they're going to have another drummer sitting in, I believe, and it's going to be a little bit heavier, you know, just, you know, inhaling-ish and less of the other type of music. But Poison S, my girl Nikki's band opening up, um, they're awesome. You know, they're just so fun. They're just great people in that band as well. So Poison S playing with Inhaling. Then Saturday night we have Vinyl Countdown. Which, unfortunately, I'm going to miss it again. I'm going to um, see Extreme and In Living Color over at House of Blues. Um, another great place, but... Um, in Living Color? Yeah. Like the real guys? Cult of Personality. Oh, my Remember God. That? Yeah, they're opening that. up for Extreme, so 
Man. Like, I'm looking forward to that. I've yeah. actually never seen In Love and Color before. I've seen Extreme before, but I'm gonna, I want to see what well, they're... we got to get uh, them over here. All right. That would, that would be good. <laughs> I, I think they'd actually do really well. Man, um, I love it. In Love and Color. But um, Vinyl Countdown, Russell was um, text me, um, who plays in the band. Um, we talked about Justin Whitehead all the time, who's the singer of Monkey Business and Def Legend, but he also sings for um, the Vinyl Countdown band. So... I had no idea that we, I, I I don't know why I never put that together. So if you love his voice in Monkey and Def Legend, and you like more of that arena rock style music, come on out to see Vinyl Countdown. I've heard great things about him, and unfortunately, I just haven't seen him yet. But I do have him booked a couple of times this year, so come on out for that. Next week again, Wednesday night, we have live band karaoke. Um, Jesse Jennings, love Jesse Jennings. He's just he always brings it. He's such a great show. Um, he's played our um you know opening day parties for baseball that we've had at the stadium um but great great music he plays original and some um covers as well so come out support him on thursday rebel yell is coming out um billy idol tribute with saving yesterday opening up another band i've never seen and i'm really looking forward to seeing saving yesterday because my staff the last time we were there just good to how incredible they were so i'm looking forward to that and then on Saturday night, big show, Unglued, the Stone Temple Pilot. And this is all next week again, the Stone Temple Pilot tribute. Um, JC Scars is opening up for um, Rise Against the Machine. And wow. like I said, they are, they bring it, they bring it, they bring it. So um, again, that's going to be a night, you know, we're not going to have, you know, little Martha, you yeah. know, coming yeah. from bingo out to the show. But maybe, um, who knows? Yeah, who knows, you know, like Stone Temple Pilots and Rise Against the Machine, I'm really looking forward to that because they are killer. So um, what else we got going on at Fat Daddy's? Started this week rewiring the place, which is super important. So we're going to a Matrix television system where we have like 50 new lines going in there. Every TV will be able to have a different um, program on it, different sporting event instead of, you know, if you've been out there in the past, you know, Certain TVs can only be on certain games because, you know, they're tied to another TV in there. Not anymore. So sometime next week, the wiring is going in this week. Next week, we'll be, you know, programming it to a tablet and hooking up the Matrix. And also, we're looking forward to that for all your sports. Um, I know football is over, but we still got hockey out there. And, um, you know, baseball is starting soon. So um, I know when the Stars do well, which I think now they're in first place, whatever. Um, we do pretty well up there, so come on out and watch your um, Stars games, and uh, it'll be a different experience for you, hopefully. Um, so the Matrix is going in. I went new. Um, we, we've just been meeting about it. We're about six weeks out from rolling out you know, a new tablet system for all of our servers. So every server will be on a tablet. We'll have multiple um, bar, I guess, wells opened up. So servers should only get better, you know, where... Um, the server is just going to be out in the front of house. That's it. They're just going to be out there running drinks for you and, you know, taking care of everything from a tablet, not running to a computer to be able to take care of it. If you order food, we'll have specific people that are just dedicated to that. So shouldn't be hard for you to be able to get a drink. We'll have multiple bartenders all over the place inside there. So that should be happening in the next six weeks or so. Um, so that's coming up. Um, we have a new live music schedule starting next Thursday on the 22nd. And this is based upon some stuff I've been seeing on, you know, the DFW Tribute um, Facebook page. Put up a post asking people about some of their issues they had. Um, I've heard about it from people in the past. They talked about it. Um, and, you know, Mansfield, Texas, we're far enough away from Dallas and Fort Worth and all of that where, you know, we want to be able to draw those people in. But we were starting shows you know, 9, 9.30 at night. And by the time the bands were ending, I was trying to have them end 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning. You know, if we close at 2, at least there'll be live music playing the whole time. But that deters people from being able to come in. So I decided we'll start all of our live music an hour earlier. So Thursday nights, um, 8 o'clock start. Friday and Saturday nights, um, if it's one band, they'll be going on at 8.30. Two bands, the first band will start at 8, um, and your headliner should be able to be on by 9.30. And then um, if it's three bands, we'll handle it accordingly. Um, but that also means um, 
If you show up after 7 o'clock, you're paying a door fee. I know it used to be somewhere around 7.30 or 8 o'clock, I believe. But um, now it's going to be 7 o'clock. Um, if you get in before 7, you don't have to pay to cover. After 7 o'clock, um, you'll pay to cover. So, again, those people that want to get a table, we give tables to paying customers. Um, that's the first thing that we're trying to do, um, at least reserve tables for the paying customers. So call up, reserve a table. Um, any of those people that want to get in for free, let them get in for free, but sit at the back of the club um, and, you know, in the you know less desirable seats. And just the other thing, I know somebody else, brought it up this week um, about the building design inside there. They talked about the stage location that we have and the annoying poles that are in the way. And just to give you a heads up, those poles aren't there just because we wanted them there. That part of the building, just so everybody knows, used to be a steak restaurant. And those three pillars that are over there are load-bearing. We can't remove them. So we apologize for that. I know it is, you know, people are trying to figure out, why don't you just get rid of them? We can't. So we apologize for that, but there is still plenty of space in there for you to be able to see the band, stand on the dance floor, be able to stand in front of the stage, and be able to watch them. So um, that's it about the um, you know the new things coming up Wednesday nights. Remember, it's industry nights over at um, Fat Daddy. So come in, and get your industry card if you're in the service industry. We have specials for you and all. Um, St. Patrick's Day, the next big event, Sunday, March 17th. That's on the Sunday we're doing it. We're going to have Penny and the Flamethrowers who's going to be out there playing. And I believe we're going to be doing it from like 1.30 in the afternoon to 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So, you're not, you know, if you want to come out, it's all ages again. I think that's but, great. Yeah, you all, know, we'll have drink there. specials. Yeah. We'll be able to party and listen to live music. And if you haven't seen Penny and the Flamethrowers there, think of a pinup model singing, you know, some bluesy and rockabilly type versions of all different songs you can imagine up until you know more modern music out there but they're a great great show again phenomenal people you know i'm texting with them all the time so that's march 17th be on the lookout for that um some of the other big shows we have coming up is electric church with van hagar remember that's march 2nd so mike bill you know kevin Great guys. If you've seen them before, you know how incredibly talented this band is and how they pack the place. So March 2nd, be ready to come out for that. March 15th, they talked about it. Messer is playing out there. Um, and he's playing with the Tools, a Tools tribute, and Cherry Bomb, which is um, the Joan Jett tribute opening up for them. But come out and check out Messer. I mean, you'll love the music. It's it's um, it, it, it's pretty good music. It reminds me of like Daughtry-ish um, type of music, whatever, but come out and judge for yourself. Um, the day after that, March 16th, they have Aaron Copeland playing with Billy Joe. Um, Billy Joe, just so you know, she's um, debuted on the country chart a couple of weeks ago with Right Now Kind of Girl. Um, Aaron Copeland's got a new album coming out. He's, I think I just saw he's got a new single coming up um, or coming out this week from that, but... You know, if you come out, so he's got some incredible, incredible songs. One of mine off his new album that he's coming out with is Baby Needs Some Neon. So look for that. And then April 6th, we have um, Scotty Austin. He's bringing in Scotty Austin, who's back in Saving Abel. He's coming out um, with an arena rock show that they're doing. So they also have The Lonely Ones and Love to Hate coming out. That's April 6th, so be on the lookout for that. Um, Outside of that, what's going on? Thompson's Bookstore. Again, we're still recovering um, from the explosion at the Sandman. Um, so construction is and repairs are still underway. But we are open. Come on out. Um, enjoy a great craft cocktail. That's at 900 Houston Street in um, downtown Fort Worth. Phenomenal place. You'll have a great time. It's a great date night location for those that want to come out. I know by the time this comes out, it may be too late for you to think about you know, Valentine's, but um, we have a lot of events that come on out there as well. So um, just join us at Thompson's. They're open at 3 o'clock every day until um, 2 a.m. Um, and the Speakeasy, that's what they're most known for, is open up Wednesday, um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. So um, come on and enjoy that. Marksman, um, haven't talked about them, you know, in a couple of weeks, but Marksman Firearms, all of our locations are now doing a Gun in a Month special. Um, you could check out, while well, supplies last, I know, but you could check out our gun of the month, guns of the month that we have for each location 
on um, marksman.com. Go to our website and check that out. Um, I know that we're limited to what we're allowed to display on Facebook, you know, about promoting guns and gun sales and all of that, but nobody can say what we cannot do on our own website. So marksmanfirearms.com. That's what it is, right? Marksmanfirearms.com. Sorry, I think I misspoke before. Um, also, remember House of Hot Rods. Um, we have a car show with Summit um, on March 23rd, um, and that's supposed to um, help benefit the Alex Viola Foundation, which is um, military-related. So come on out. Last we heard, we're looking forward to about 1,000 cars being out there. So if you like your hot oh, rods. Yeah, 1,000 cars, yeah. You know, that, that's going to be incredible. And then also coming soon, you'll start seeing signs out there, but construction on um, Capone's Drinkery and Sports Bar. Um, drink, drink Easy. Drink Easy and Sports Bar. Yeah. Um, that's going to be on, um, in Burleson is the first location, and that's right next to the porch and where Spokes used to be the bike shop. But um, construction demolition is going to start in less than two weeks over there. We're blowing up the building. And then we're um, starting from scratch, building your um, Drink Easy and Sports Bar over there. So Capone's being a lookout for that. And then after that, will be a location in um, um, Granbury as well. So that's it for this week. Thank you for listening. I appreciate your rambling. As always, comment. Let us know what you think. Keep the discussions going. That's probably the most important thing is making sure we're having the difficult conversations, making sure we're addressing. I don't shy away from commenting about... You know, anything that I feel that, you know, will help benefit the, the, I guess, industry out there. And I'm talking about the service industry, not just live music and all of that, but anything I could do to help promote another venue, anything I could do to help promote what we're doing and improve it, that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. So thank you again for listening. We'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>